All right. Hi, this is Maria, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about neutralization and titrations. So there's two main goals. It's to learn about neutralization reactions and to talk about what a titration is. So first, we're going to talk about neutralization reactions. You've actually already done some. So when you were mixing solutions towards the end of the lab, you noticed that the pH got more neutral um, when you were mixing an acid and a base together. So what's actually happening there is when you mix an acid and a base together, you always produce a water as one of the products and then a salt. Remember, salt can be used as a very general term. It doesn't have to always mean sodium chloride. Um, technically, the definition is, is that it's, it's an ionic compound that's produced from a neutralization reaction. So what it's often going to look like is this sort of format, where you've got um, where A is representing any random anion, and then B is representing any um, random cation. Um, and where then my salt that's going to form is BA in this particular one. Okay, so I've got a bunch of examples for you. So we'll start off with a classic one of hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide is going to give me water and sodium chloride. Sulfuric acid with potassium hydroxide is going to get me water and potassium sulfate. Hydrofluoric acid and calcium hydroxide will form water and calcium fluoride. And, oops, sorry. And that's essentially the big things. Those are all great examples. You'll notice that the balancing is a little bit different depending on how many OHs or depending on how many H's um, are present in either the acid or the base when we're looking at this. So just something to pay attention to. And it's, there's a reason why not all of these are one-to-one-to-one. -to -one -to -one. Okay, so uh, whenever we're talking about neutralization reactions, students have kind of this misconception that it's always going to have then a pH of seven. And that's not quite correct. It's true if you're mixing a strong base and a strong acid, which we'll talk more about what we mean by strong later. And if we're saying something's completely neutralized. And what I mean by completely neutralized is you have to have the same amount of moles of H plus and the same amount of moles of OH minus. When we're talking about that, you'll need stoichiometry. So let's walk through an example problem of a neutralization reaction. So let's say that I've got 1.30 liters of 1.50 molar KOH and then a solution of 1.25 molar sulfuric acid. How much of the sulfuric acid do I actually need in order to neutralize the KOH? As with any um, uh, stoichiometry problem, you'll need a balanced equation. So here's my balanced equation. And then let me walk you through it. So if I'm just trying to figure out how much of the H2SO4 do I need to neutralize it? All I'm going to need to do is figure out, okay, how much KOH or how much uh, H2SO4 do I need to react with all of the KOH? That's really all this is asking. So if I walk through this, use the molarity of the KOH solution to turn it into moles of KOH. Once once I've got moles of KOH, I can turn it into moles of sulfuric acid. And then once I have moles of sulfuric acid, I can use the molarity. I know it's always weird when you invert molarity, but that's totally legal to do here. <laughs> um, once I've done that, I can solve for the amount of sulfuric acid that I need. Now, even though these molarities are, are fairly close, um, I need a lot less of this, which makes sense given my balanced equation. Just something to, to kind of think about, but that would be about it. Okay, well, where does this come into play in the lab? Well, it's when we're doing titrations. Now, titrations are just experiments where you figure out the concentration of either an unknown molarity of acid of, or base by using a known concentration of base or acid. And there's a pretty specific setup for what that is. Um, there's some terms that I want you to write down. So if you're using the, the guided notes, um, 
go ahead and just like write in here. Otherwise, sketch this out a little bit. You're going to want to have a few things written down. Um, what goes into the burette is the titrant, and the titrant is the thing that you know the concentration of. Now, what you're going to put into the flask is the analyte, which is the acid or base that you don't know the concentration of. What we're going to use, of course, in there is an indicator, and it's going to eventually turn pink. Um, so you may have been like, we've used one that turns pink. Yeah, so phenothalein is actually the one that we're going to use for when we're doing titrations. Um, but I would have some sort of little sketch about this and like what goes where, because often students accidentally think that uh, the unknown concentration goes up here, and that's not correct. So just something, have a little sketch of this in your notes. Okay. So how would I turn that into figuring out the concentration of the solution? So here's an example where maybe there was a titration done. And I know how much of the HCl was done. Um, so I measured out 25, oh, I should have put 0, 0.00 of an unknown concentration of HCl. And then I'm taking, it took 16.25 uh, milliliters of 0 0.50 molar NaOH to neutralize that completely, to titrate it. So if I'm trying to figure out the concentration of the HCl, I, of course, I need a balanced equation, so I got that here. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, okay, well, I can turn that NaOH into, um, and I am doing a little bit of a, a one-step <laughs> cheat, because I know that when I'm using the molarity of the NaOH, um, it's, 0 0.50 moles per liter. And I know that a liter is the same thing as a thousand milliliters. So I'm doing two things at once here, I know. And then I use the uh, mole ratio between HCl and NaOH. And that tells me how many moles of HCl were in that beaker. And then as long as I just convert that 25 milliliters into liters, and then I divide the number of moles that were in the flask that I titrated, that gives me the molarity of the HCl. And so that's what it would be for this one. Okay. So that's how you would use this to figure out the concentration of something when going through. Now you have a problem right here that you should go ahead, try out, um, and you'll essentially do a really similar thing when we're talking about it more in class. Okay, great. Have a great rest of your night. Make sure you write down any questions you have for your teacher. We'll see you soon.